Hartman Coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Tennessee Titans and the Baltimore Ravens. With that, let's get up to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. There to call all the action. We welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, they love their crab cakes and they love their football. That's what Maryland does. And we are at M&T Bank Stadium down near the inner harbor of Baltimore. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with the Tennessee Titans. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white line. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up. And instinctively, you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got a coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yes, a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the thank you for the notice. The Florida Atlantic man, Greg Joseph, ready to get this one started. And off we go from MT Bank Stadium. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Ravens offense coming onto the field. There's quarterback Lamar Jackson. And you don't want to hand out awards until the season's officially MVP. over. But MVP. Yeah, I just okay, we're not I think the engraver's out. workbench is prepped and ready to go to put his name on there. NFL record for rushing yards in a season by a quarterback passing Michael Vick in Week 15 against the Jets. If you're looking to the playoffs, what do teams need to do to slow down Lamar Jackson? Well, what they're going to try to do is take away all of the running game and that means you've got to take away Mark Ingram as well his tailback because if he gets things established running inside that's when Lamar Jackson's really dangerous faking it to him and getting to the edges but you're going to put extra people with eyes on him to try and take away the run so for the playoffs Lamar Jackson just be prepared to hit those layups downfield because there will be open receivers the last run got a couple here second and eight On the draw, this is Ingram. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. A look at the defensive starters for Tennessee. Kenny Vaccaro is an excellent player. Can cover in the slot, but his best attributes, tackling people and rushing the quarterback. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson rolling to his right. He may try and run for this. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble and now fourth down. I like his effort there. He got it done on his own, but let's face it. He puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rounding, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. Titans coming hard, and they block it. And they will wind up with the football and the possession. Special teams putting a mark on this game early. Opening drive, block punt. And for one team, it's a good mark. And for the other, not so good. And this is why special teams coaches are like designated hitters to me. They don't get very many opportunities. They need to maximize when it comes their way. And as we just said, one of them did. As the Titans come back out onto the field here, this is a crew, Charles, that made a heck of a run in the middle of the season. But... I, uh, they might look back at that Week 15 loss at home to Houston is the one that was the turn in the wrong direction. Had everything going in their direction, to use your word, right? Because remember, that run led to Houston coming to their place in the feature game of the week in the AFC, and they didn't win it. Remember last year, they lost to the Colts at home in Week 17, and that kept them out of the playoffs. This is a good team. Whether they make the playoffs or not, they do have a big decision to make at the quarterback spot next year. But Ryan Tannehill, who played so well in relief of Marcus Mariota this year, 
Will he be re-signed by Tennessee? Or will he decide he wants to try it somewhere else? That's a big question for the Titans to answer. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. I remember watching Derrick Henry come out of Alabama and sitting with some scouts, and one of the debate points with him was, while at Bama, how often did he have to deal with contact near the line of scrimmage? They were so good up front that he often got to the second level pretty easily. I think he's starting to answer those questions with runs like that. He's a physical, physical guy. Set, eight, three. Here's Tannehill, and he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Josh Bynes able to get him for a loss of about three. That I'm struggling to understand a little bit. That close to the goal line, first down, run the football. If you want to throw it, throw some play action on second down. So second and goal, and the big man Henry alone in the backfield. He'll get it up the middle. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let him know right away I'm throwing it. I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other. And that is caught by Davis for a Tennessee touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown grab as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And this is good. Our score, 7-0 Tennessee. So that drive spanned five plays. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. Joseph now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. As the Ravens come back out here on offense, we talked about Lamar Jackson earlier, Charles, but these Ravens, they rolled through the middle part of the season. A couple losses in September, but undefeated in October, November, and rolled that into December. They've answered every big question thus far. The wins over Seattle, New England, Houston, the Rams, the Niners and Bills as well. Are they the favorites to hoist the Lombardi Trophy in Miami on February 2nd? I believe they are because they are a complete team. As much as Lamar Jackson powers everything on offense, he has Marquise Hollywood Brown out wide. He can throw the ball deep to. Dependable tight ends led by Mark Andrews. Really good offensive line. Mark Ingram can run it. The defense comes at you from every imaginable angle. And if you're trying to prepare on offense for them, it is hard to do. And your quarterback gets hit a lot. And they have the best kicker in the league in Justin Tucker. That's a big formula for success when come playoff time. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. Check, 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 check. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. And he's got his man, Marquise Brown. And they work this well up field across the 45. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. Right. 
This is Ingram on first and 10. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. All day, just like that. Just like that. On second down, Ingram. He'll get three up to midfield. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. From midfield now, here's Jackson. It's caught by Mark Ingram. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 40. Back at the 43-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. From the gun, Jackson. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Here's Jackson to throw. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 26. Let's go. to the running game. It's Ingram. And he'll lose yardage here. Going down back at the 28. A loss of two there. Second down. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. On the counter, Ingram, and only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Jackson. He'll buy some. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Rashad Evans, the linebacker, recording the sack there. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. 
So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. This one from 48 yards away. And this one is right down the middle. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They'll get that one out quickly to Brown. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit, but how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. From the gun, here's Tannehill. He'll get this to his tight end. It's Jonu Smith. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. And to give this time to the tailback. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, it's Henry. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give him two yards on the gain there, and it will take us to the end of quarter number one. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. On third down, it's Lewis. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. Now Greg Joseph for the field goal try. On the right hash, officially this will be a 51-yard attempt. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. 
NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. On second and nine, Jackson sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Watch the screen, watch the screen. Watch the screen. Jackson now. Looking sideline incomplete. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. And that'll bring up second down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. A 10th carry here for Mark Ingram. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Ravens on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Jackson. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. The 305-pound defensive end, Jarrell Casey, gets the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Titans now. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Marcus Peters up to make the tackle. 
Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. A second down run with Lewis. And some room to run now. Deion Lewis, the 40, 20, 10, touchdown Titans. Deion Lewis, 75 yards. And the Titans get the quick strike touchdown. And with his speed, if he just finds the slightest crease, he can take it the distance like he did there. How about the leverage up front? Offensive line out leveraging the defensive front to create that space, that crease that he was looking for. And once he hits open field, he's going to be very difficult to catch and corral. Joseph on for the extra point. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14 to 6. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Joseph now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. See if he can look and do some soul searching now. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Throwing on second and eight, Jackson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. And that'll make it third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs gonna throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to the QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw, luckily fell incomplete. Now Jackson, they go screen, this is Ingram. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line. 10 yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Sneed as they run the jet sweep. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. On second down now. It's Ingram, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. 
I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Let him know, let him know. On third down, Jackson. He can run for it, and he will. A good decision in the end to pull it and run. Gets him nine yards in the first. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. down. Ingram. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Not today, you are. Not today. <laughs> On second down, it's Edwards. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And they're going to have a third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. The Ravens on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and eight. They go play action now. Jackson, open man is the tight end, Nick Boyle. And he's gonna have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 31-yard line. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now it's Jackson. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Throwing is Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 14. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the... And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. A 14-yard touchdown as his guys have cut the lead down to two. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And this is up and good. It brings him within a point now. It's 14-13. 
That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tummy. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball Go! back pretty quickly, right? Hoping 70, for a three and 80. out. So that didn't happen. Hey, you can't on, yell at your D up. for that. They've come got to take care of their own business <laughs> and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was looking to find some space for Deion Lewis there. And it's second down. CD, with that incompletion, let's talk AFC playoff picture. I think you and I agree that if you put together any sort of power rankings, we'd put Baltimore number one, certainly in the AFC. But you look ahead to the playoffs getting started on January 4th. Who do you see as their main competitor for that Lamar Hunt trophy? Well, tradition and up. Oh, it's out. Smith lost it. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. On the set. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked out and incomplete. Michael Pruitt, the big tight end, is intended receiver. But it'll be second down. With that incompletion, you know, Charles, one of the big storylines in the final few weeks of the season lies in the AFC South. Tennessee and Houston battling back and forth. Houston won round one, week 15, a victory in Nashville. But which of those two teams do you think has the potential to go deeper in the playoffs? Well, Tennessee just lost at home to Houston, and now we'll have to go on the road to play them again in Week 17. So I would say, on the surface, you would think Houston. They have the quarterback as well in Deshaun Watson that scares everyone. But I'm picking Tennessee as a team that could go deeper because of their defense. That's really a top-five defense on any given Sunday. Their ability to rush the passer, their ability to play the ball in the air. I like that Tennessee team, and I think Ryan Tannehill the switch to him at quarterback has really energized that club. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. Back deep is DeAnthony Thomas. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. His feet, what he's been able to do individually running the ball, it's kind of kept him in this game. No doubt about it, because if he's not making the plays that we've seen, they are really getting blown out in this one. I don't think they have any chance at all. He's keeping them in striking distance, hoping to get some help from the defensive side of the ball so that maybe some of these plays can turn into plays that maybe put them in the lead. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And fighting down inside the 25. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. 
coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Quick throw taken in by Sneed. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before we get there. A two minute drill before the coaches two minute drill. He finds Roberts complete. And he gets this go, one just go, shy go. of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Hey, check right, check right. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. They complete it to Hill. It'll be a two-yard game, and it's a second down. The Ravens moving quickly here as the clock runs. Check the backer, check the backer. Throwing again on second down. Jackson gets this one to Hill. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 42. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Jackson and the offense come up first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. And Jackson throwing once more. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. zone now. Here's Jackson on first down. Steps away. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Jackson, he's going to find his tight end, Boyle. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. It's a five receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. To throw is Jackson. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off with great anticipation. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel somewhat safe 
that might actually pop and turn into a big play, that's what you usually run in this situation. Or go four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? <laughs> you're just feeling it. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Titans hold the lead, and they'll get the football first as the third quarter gets underway. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> Show them one thing, hit them with something else. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Tannehill. But he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the it beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. He finds Humphreys. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. You ready? Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Derrick Henry, and this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On second down, it's Lewis. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. You don't see that a ton, do you? A cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball has moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Pressure and he's gonna go down. Tannehill sacked. Jalen Ferguson coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it also brings up fourth. That's be exactly what they were looking for coming out to start the third quarter. Get a sack, get off the field, get the momentum going in their direction. Get the ball back to your offense, right? Get that momentum because hey, 
This lead is very, very slim. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on to punt for Tennessee. Here's Thomas. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Now it's Jackson. Sneed's got it. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They run from the pistol with Ingram. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On second and 11 now. Jackson, this will be caught by Brown. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, then he curls back inside for the completion. Another carry for the workhorse tonight, Ingram. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. Tackle made by Kenny Vaccaro. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 10 yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They go play action here on first down. That's caught left side by the tight end, Boyle. 16 yards on that one at a Raven first. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A little one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Jackson now after the pick on the last drive three for three to start this drive it's first and ten they run it's Mark Ingram 
And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Ingram again. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. And he is going to get this close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the Titans' 13-yard line. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. That's going to set him back five yards. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. He may try and run for this. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Now that's disappointing for the defense. They had the advantage, had excellent coverage all over the field, but they let him get away, scramble, and pick up a first down and inside the five-yard line. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. They'll run here with Ingram. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Second and goal from inside the five. Jackson now. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Kamale Correa. The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Jackson. They go screen. This is Ingram. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough. Fourth and goal. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. Tucker's kick is good. And with that, the lead changes hands here in this third quarter. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field goals. Oh, Brandon, but what, six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, 
you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. This one caught by Davis. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. get back to the playoff picture we talked about the AFC let's look at the NFC still that race starting to come into focus we know most of the teams Seahawks 49ers Saints and Packers all in Vikings in good shape how do you handicap this race it seems like anyone can beat anyone I think you're spot on because if you were going into the playoffs with these teams that we're going to talk about who would you make the absolute favorite it could be anyone right it could be Seattle it could be San Francisco it could be New Orleans I know Minnesota's probably going to come in as a wild card. Green Bay will come in as a division champ, it looks like. But bottom line is, Dallas or Philadelphia has got to win the NFC East. And I don't know that anyone wants to go to their home field and play when they have to play in a divisional game. So when it comes, to, when you get it all together, and maybe that would be a wild card, I would guess, because they'd be the fourth team in. But when you put it all together, it is absolutely wide open about who wins the NFC and represents for the we Lombardi Trophy. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 45-yard line. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Tannehill now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and 10. This is Henry. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll break the huddle and come out with four receivers, three of them to the right side, second and seven. To throw is Tannehill. He dumps it off for Henry. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and that'll make it third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. From the gun on third down, Tannehill. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This for a fourth quarter lead. And it's no good, just short. He gave it a good run, but maybe a foot or two short of the crossbar. 
So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Draw play, Ingram now. They get 11 back on that one, it leads to third down. Partner, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Only a yard on the third down throw, and that leads to a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Sam Cook now. And remember, he had his first punt blocked. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And I hate to point to that missed field goal from their last drive, but you look at the scoreboard, they would be in the lead if they had that three. Well, no doubt those points or those missed points do loom large, but here they're getting a chance for a makeup, aren't they? Almost like my time in school, I was always begging my teachers for a makeup exam. Here's their opportunity now to put those points on the board. And every point becoming more vital here in the second half. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll make it second down. Here's Tannehill. His throw incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver, and it's third down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. Here's Brett Kern now, standing just outside his own goal line. Returnable for Thomas. Give him 11 yards that time on the return, and that will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front, 
You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Great time there to come up with his longest run of the night. We just saw it. Leads to a lot of satisfaction because if they're able to hang on and win this game, you know what else will happen in the locker room after this? What's that? Head coaches step up and go, great job, guys. Because of that, come in a little bit later tomorrow. Ingram again, a first down carry. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold blooded too. Jackson throwing here complete to Boyle. And he's dropped just before the line to game. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Jackson looking to throw on third. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. Well, forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They give him two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed. And he will score! Touchdown, Baltimore! Lamar Jackson, his second touchdown of the night as the Ravens push further out in front. Not the first time on this drive we saw him take matters into his own hands, and this time he finishes things off with a touchdown run. You're not going to be happy with me, but I think he took matters into his own feet, didn't he? No. Oh. <laughs> Davis from the top rope. <laughs> I like it. Tucker with the extra point, and that makes this a nine-point game. So this drive spans seven plays, and it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. 
They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Now Tannehill. Got a man. It's Brown. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They run with Lewis out of the gun. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. The Titans on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This time they face a third and two. And he finds his target. It's Sharp. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Tannehill on the offense with a first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Escaping the pressure right. He'll try and run it. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And all the way down to the 17-yard line. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Now it's Tannehill. That's complete to Sharp. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. So not quite a first and goal just yet as they come up now second and inches. Tannehill. Now he's got him. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. Here's a quick throw out wide to Humphreys. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. From three yards out, as they have now chopped this lead down to three. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you gotta, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Joseph now to add the PAT. Oh, 
And the lead is down to two. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a Tennessee score. Joseph now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. You tell them, here's the situation. They've got all of their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, I mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's Ingram. And he'll get this up to about the 40. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now it's Ingram. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Jackson looks to throw, fires right side, and that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Here's Sam Cook now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And that hits at the six and carries Let's into go, the end zone go. for a touchback. So now Tannehill and the Titans down by two. A minute 37 remaining. Needing at least 40 yards, you'd have to Ready. think, to have a shot. He'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Jihad Ward in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Back to throw. Completes it to Davis. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. 
Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and ten. A draw play here, Lewis. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. The best play callers in any league know how to break their tendencies. They study themselves, they self-scout, and they realize the most of the time Get you don't call a draw play on first and ten. So every so often you insert that play just to make the defense think, even if it's not successful. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He's back to throw. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. Oh, Davis lost it. It's loose. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this, you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.